Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Top 5 Total War video. This time covering the Top 5 Exploits in a Total War game. Now, viewer discretion is advised. Once you've seen these exploits, you can't unsee them, and it may change the way you look at these games. Anyway, let's move on to the number 5 pick. Coming in at number 5 is the Crusade and Jihad exploit for Medieval 2 Total War. So this is a mechanic that you can use throughout the campaign, and it's a big part of Medieval 2. Now one thing that you're absolutely not supposed to be able to do whilst on Crusade or Jihad, is attack people of your own faith. So I've got a situation here where we've got a Muslim army that's on Jihad, and uh, Jerusalem's under siege by an Egyptian army. Now we want to get rid of these guys, but I can't, I can't, I can't attack them because I'm on Jihad. Well, there's two ways we can go about this. You can either, firstly, take him of Jihad, and then you can actually make the attack. It would be better if we're standing right next to him. The other thing that we can do is hire a mercenary. That that way, that unit there is not on Jihad. Move him over here. Okay. Now, like I said, you can select the general and make the attack. So you can do that. That's how you can get a Jihad army to do it. The other way is to put him back on Jihad and then select the unit that is not on Jihad. Now, if I had put him back on Jihad while this guy was in the army, he would have automatically joined it. But you can see here, he's the only one that's not in the army. As long as you just select the unit that's not on Jihad, you can attack the enemy army. So we have got an army that's on Jihad attacking another Muslim force. This is something that you are not supposed to do in this Total War game. And that's why it gets the number 5 slot. Anyway, let's move on to the number 4 slot. Coming in at number 4 is the movement bug in Total War Rome 2. So, I've got an army just standing over here, and I want to move him back to Italy. I just want him to move far away, as quickly as possible. Now, we can see as... Um, what the game indicates how far he's supposed to be able to move in this turn but I'm just not happy with that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this general at the last second of his movement and replace him with someone else so you need to get it set up just so there's just one click and then as soon as he reaches his destinations but before he actually reaches it click it it stops him from moving and it forgets the fact that he, he moved at all and you can do this as many times as you like. Ready for orders. But a key thing to note, that if you're too slow with it, if you're too slow with it, it won't fire. He has to still be moving in order for the movement bug to work. With this movement bug, you're only limited and with how far your armies can move based on how many generals you have in reserve. It essentially doesn't cost you a damn thing. Anyway, that's why this gets the number 4 slot. Now let's move on to number 3. Coming in at number 3 is the diplomacy exploit for Total War Shogun 2. Now, Shogun 2 is, normally speaking, a pretty balanced and bug-free Total War game. But this particular oversight in the diplomacy is pretty major. Now, a large part of Shogun 2 is the Realm Divide, and this exploit works specifically during the Realm Divide. If you maybe got into the Realm Divide a little bit too early, and are getting overwhelmed by your enemies, this diplomacy will really come in handy for you. Now, there's only one thing that you absolutely must have before this, this exploit will work, is that you must have a decent income. Now, before you enter the diplomacy, what, th what you can do is just temporarily jack up your taxes before you before you make the deal in order for your income to get inflated. You can always just drop the income straight back down right after the deal's been made. So we've got a situation here, they're about to attack Iwate. What do we do? We go into the diplomacy, we need to get a peace treaty because a peace treaty will mean that these guys will go back home and they won't be able to attack us in a turn because they'll be more than a turn away. So we go to the Chosakabe, request a peace, unacceptable, no problem. Request that is a payment, we'll pay Speak them a, piece. a payment, it has to be a tribute, and you can pay them as much as what you have available in your income. It doesn't matter how much you've got in your treasury, which is why I said you can, you, if you need to, you can jack up the taxes. Now in this particular scenario, we don't actually need to pay them that much, 6,000 will do just fine, and offer the maximum amount of time for that, because it'll give extra weight to the tribute. They'll usually if you offer enough, uh, say that it's satisfactory, 
and then they'll go back home. And now you might be thinking, but you have to pay them an absurd amount of money. Well, no, you don't actually, because it's Realm Divide. Um, the moment that you hit end turn, they declare war on you again. And you took no, no diplomacy rip repercussions because they declare war on you. Uh, you got your money, so I got I got the money from the end turn. You can see it with the increasing increasing clan treasury, and we saved we saved the city. There was no downside to it at all, and you can do this multiple times. Speak your insolence, and there is there is nothing that'll stop you from just doing it again. And around and round. They go. And that's how you use the Realm Divide against it. Anyway, that's why it's at number three. Let's move on to number two. Coming in at number two is the Sally Out exploit for Medieval 2. So yes, Medieval 2 is getting a second spot on this list uh, because it does have a lot of exploits. Now, funny thing about this one here, and this one might take a while to explain because it's very complicated, and to some degree I don't know the full extent of it. It's the Sally Out exploit. Now, depending on what game version you're using, whether you're using the disc version or the Steam version, you're going to get a completely different result out of this. Now, for the most part, if you use the Steam version, this exploit is semi-fixed. But if you're using the disc version, it's utter it's totally not fixed. Now, I've got the di I've got the Steam version here, so I can't actually properly show you, but I'm pretty sure there's so many people that still use the disc version, which is why this is even getting a spot on the list. So, the Saliat exploit has three layers to it, and on the Steam version, only the third layer will work, but I'll explain how the first two layers work as well. Anyway, so what we need to do here, we've got a situation where we take just one unit and we sally out. Uh, we've got a situation where the AI is going to sally out against us over the intern. Now, I've got a save file here where it's just about to occur. Now, the first part of it, and again, this only works on the disc version, is right when the animation of them sallying out is about to occur, but before they actually make the attack, you hit escape and you hit save game. Now, like I said, I've got the Steam version of the game, so this doesn't work anymore. But if you've got the disc version, it does work. Okay, you hit save and then you load that save file again. So with the Steam version, it's locked off. When, when the animation's going off, you can't save the game anymore. It's something that they actually fixed. Okay, so that part, portion of it doesn't work anymore, but it still works for disc version. Anyway. The second part, okay, which again, only works on the disc version. Now this exploit here that I'm talking about, this next part here, was actually explained in my exploit guide that I made six years ago, because I used the disc version back then. So this next one is where you go into this battle, and you exit the battle immediately as soon as it starts, and what that does is it calls it a draw, but it will not work in the Steam version. So, in the disc version, if you hit exit battle, before they've opened the gate, you, you, you get a draw, and they can't, they can't sally out again this turn. But because, you know, like I said, Steam version, this it's actually fixed. Now, there's still the, the third version of this bug, and this one is far less powerful. Breaks the siege. We leave. But it still does work. It only works in certain scenarios, though. So, the AI sallies out, and... This doesn't work if the AI has artillery in their army, or it has, in, sorry, in their garrison, or if they have um, cavalry in their army. If, if they do have cavalry in the garrison, you have to you have to actually eliminate on eliminate them on the battlefield. But if they've only got infantry, then this can work. So I'll showcase how this one works. So all you have to do is take your enemy and move them to a corner of the map. Okay, so as we can see here, we've moved them pretty much to the corner of the map, okay? Now the thing is, if there's nobody left garrisoning the city, or castle, they always leave the gate open, which is, again, this is why it doesn't work if artillery is left in the city. Then what you do with your cavalry, and it only works if you've got cavalry, you can't do this with infantry, you race back to the town square, and you basically capture the city before they can get back, because you only get a three minute turn timer, and, well, countdown timer, and because they'll be exhausted by running here, which is what the AI always does in a sally out battle, they just won't be able to get back in time. So as we can see here, totally just went inside the gate, and we just cap it. They'll never get back here within that time frame. 
Like I said, they haven't even made it back inside the city yet. And then boom. And we take the city without even a single casualty. Like I said, this is something that is less powerful than the Steam version, but it does still work. Anyway, let's now move on to the crown jewel, the biggest fucking exploit in a Total War game. Moving on to the number one slot. Coming in at the number one spot is such a huge exploit that is actually present in three Total War games. It's the movement bug exploit which was introduced in Empire Total War and continues in Napoleon Total War and Shogun 2. This bug is so big that Creative Assembly simply couldn't fix it. It was simply a, a problem within the Warscape engine that they actually had to cut the feature entirely in order to stop it from occurring. It's the attach-detach bug, which is why in Rome 2, you're not allowed to reattach your units anymore. It was pretty much done to stop this bug because it was plaguing uh, the, the, uh, the, like I said, the Empire Total War, Napoleon Total War, and Shogun 2. Now, it's not a well-known bug, but... It is a big one. So, how does it work? You take an army, and then you get... It's at full movement, right? And you take a unit, any unit, and just run out all of its movement. Completely needs to run out all of its movement down to zero. Then you reattach it to the army. Now, it doesn't matter how many of the units have zero movement, but in this particular scenario here, the best way to use it is to just run out the movement of just one of them. Now, what you need to do is just... Take note of which unit doesn't have any movement left. Make sure that when you select every unit except for one, make sure you're selecting the unit that has no movement, and then detach. And then the unit that still has movement can reattach, and this is how you can drag a unit that has absolutely no movement all the way across the map. Now here's the thing. The only unit that's using movement in this scenario here is this guy. Now if you didn't have a unit that had no movement, then when you detach them, they would use up their movement. It's absolutely crucial that a unit have no movement. It doesn't work if you don't. And like I said, it works in Empire Total War, Napoleon Total War, and Shogun 2. And using this exploit here, with this army here, you could very easily get all the way across the map, from one side of the map to the other. In addition to that, okay, if you really need extra movement, what you can do is just hire a new general. And as long as you haven't used up all the movement on all of your units, that general will come with full movement. So you can leave that general behind so that you can continue to use the exploit. And if you run out of movement, you just hire another general. So you're only limited by how many funds that you have. Now obviously, it doesn't work quite as well as that in Shogun 2. You can't just pull a general out of your ass. But in Empire Total War, you totally can. And to, and to a small degree uh, in Napoleon Total War. And that's why this gets the number one slot. It's the biggest bug uh, exploit in a Total War game. Anyway, that's my top five list. Let me know what you think. I'm uh, curious to know if you guys know of any exploits that I don't know. Uh, and if you think that any of the exploits that you know should have made the list, let me know because I'm very curious about this kind of stuff. Anyway, let me know what top 5 videos should be next, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.